G'day YouTube. I thought I'd do a species spotlight today on uh, Nepenthes Raja, which is known as the king of Nepenthes. It gets the biggest traps in the world by volume. It doesn't reach the, uh, the height of uh, Truncata, but it is an absolutely monstrous plant, uh, un unlike this one at the moment, but it'll get there. Hopefully you can see where I was holding that. I thought I'd bring this one out. This one's a little bit smaller than my other one, so it was easier to get out of the fridge. Uh, running through some of the care, care guides I use for this, what I do to grow it, and I'll show you the big one in my fridge as well. So first up, going with uh, the potting media, I've got this in an Akadama mix, Akadama, Kanuma, and Perlite. These come from ultramafic soil. They grow terrestrially in the ground. They're not epiphytic. Uh, I do. I have seen lots of people growing them in cocoa chips, and some of the best specimens I've ever seen are growing in it. Now, for me, I found the Akadama works fantastically. You can see there, I've got a nice bed of live moss on top. I do keep this misted you know, every few days. I try and keep up, um, but I don't tend to water the plants heavily very often once a week at most, and that seems to be keeping him very happy. I do tend to say I get a bit of uh, black sooty mould. Not a major issue. They are quite a, a nectary plant. I can, well, you can, well, I can see the nectar droplets on that tendril falling, forming there. Now, these are also incredibly slow. I got these about four years ago. Uh, this one's... Uh, it's already put on quite a lot of size, but the other one in the fridge just exploded this year. It's uh, it's incredible, the, the growth rates I've seen on it um, in compared to previous years. And I'm, I think I'm going to put that down to conditions. I finally got a air conditioner in the greenhouse. It's all run off sensors um, and more recently moved into the fridge uh, probably about three months ago, two, three months ago, I'm going to I guess. Um, and they are just pumping along. They're super happy in there. Uh, so I do have the fridge set to 25 degree days and 14 degree nights, but these are on the bottom shelf. So it's probably three, three or four degrees cooler than that uh, on that shelf. And I, I've turned that into my ultra low land, oh, sorry, ultra high land section. Velosas. Uh, Aristocoides, all those real high elevation plants, over two, th a lot of them are over 2,000 uh, meters above sea level. So it's getting right up there. Uh, and I think that's possibly where a lot of people go wrong with these plants. Rajas, uh, Velosas, all those things. As much as I don't have too much experience with it, I have heard from a lot of more experienced growers that. You can get away with, you know, more average temperatures, pushing the limits of what they like for a while, you know, three, four, five years, maybe six years. But they have, over time, they do slow down and just start to struggle. And I did see this in my previous greenhouse, particularly Lowly Eye, um, which powered along for a few years. And then every summer they got worse and worse. And then wouldn't bounce back in winter as quickly. And I think I got my my new move to the new place, set up the new greenhouse just in time before I actually started losing the plants. So it's one thing I will suggest to people is if they are getting into the the, the true highland plants like Raja, you know, you can you can get away with it for a little bit, but you really do need to uh, set up a true highland environment. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a fridge. Uh, I do think you'd get away with uh, an air-conditioned greenhouse, but you want to get those, be getting those temperatures down, particularly the night temperatures, um, anything below 15 degrees, I think you'd do all right with. Um, I haven't tried pushing it myself with this fridge. I just I run it as close to highland as I can, and everything seems to be going absolutely gangbusters but, um, yeah, so I'll take you down. I'll show you where it lives and 
the, the larger one. I'm just swing around here. Uh, so this picture actually sits on the uh, on the pot of the previous one. It's, so it's a bit tricky to turn around. But this has just popped in the last couple of days. It is absolutely gorgeous. And you got another nice older picture back there. A bit dark in that corner, but you can see here this gets an absolute ton of light. It's actually hitting the light. I'm going to try and drop this shelf today just to get, you know, it might only be a few more centimetres, but I don't like the fact that the growth point hits the light as it unravels. But it does also show I'm going to have to do something, something more about this soon. Uh, maybe if I drop that shelf, I can, I can lift that shelf a little bit. Uh, so you can see that one's in a much bigger pot. Now they do, they do like larger pots than uh, most Nepenthes. I think roughly around this sort of leaf was when I repotted this one, and it was in the hundred mil pot that you saw before. And when I, when I pulled it out, it was completely root bound. They have masses and masses of roots. So I actually suspect that this. This is a 200 mil pot, and it's a much deeper pot. I suspect in another year or two, I'm going to have to open that up into an even bigger pot than that. But I might try and keep the height, as keep it in a shorter pot, but just go wider, maybe a 220, 230, or 250 maybe. Um, got, look at guys like Jeremiah Harris. They are in these massive, massive wide pots. For their big mature rajas and they just look absolutely spectacular touch on raja love food they are an absolute glutton uh, whether it be feeding the pi the pictures with bugs um i was doing that a bit in here but as much as i've tried to get i've got a, a fan on every shelf of the, the fridge uh for lots of good airflow but it does same. I still I get quite a lot of mold if I use insects for food, so I've had to stop doing that. Um, Osmocote pellets in most pictures that I open, when I can, particularly smaller plants. But also I do add a bit. Uh, you might be able to see buried in here. So there's three or four prills of. Uh, this is actually Nutricote. I'm testing again, testing out, and uh, as you can see there under the moss, the Akadama mix in there, and the little grey pearls of Nutricoat. It's just 16, 16, 16 balanced fertilizer, but it's a, unlike Osmocote, it's a true slow release fertilizer for 180 days. I put notes on the fridge of when I did it, so I don't have to worry that I'm overdoing or un underdoing it, or it's it's going to uh, water in too quickly, like the Osmocote. Um, and these things, I haven't pushed it too far, but they just seem to be able to take a lot of food, a lot more food than the most Depenthes. Um, I've been told that Edward Siana, on the other hand, does not like root fertilization, but absolutely loves uh, pitcher, pitcher fertilization. So you do have to. Tweak your uh, your methods depending on the exact plant you're talking about. Nothing, there's no be all end all, and I'm sure there's other people growing these things differently to me, um, and having great results as well. You can see these amazing peltate leaves. They get the picture. The tendril actually comes almost more from the middle of the leaf, a lot like uh, Clipiata. Is another one that does it, maybe Peltata. Ooh, I'd have to check that one after look, but it's a very, very cool plant. Very cool leaves. Very just everything about this plant. You'll see it. See the uh, the photos from Mount Kinabalu. They are absolutely monstrous pictures. Uh, I think holds something like two liters, three liters of uh, fluid at some of them. And it seems once they fully mature, they get this massive dome-shaped lid over the top, which I am praying one day to have a, my own plants doing that, but we'll see how we go. Anyway, I think that's all I can uh, can say about Raja. I 
I'm not going to say I'm a true, a real expert on them. Uh, I think I do bit better with my Vichy eyes personally, but they're also a much easier plant to grow, much easier plant to come across. Uh, anyway, so I'll, I'll leave you to that, and I'm going to uh, get to work dropping the shelf in this fridge and do some more greenhouse work. All right, see you next time. Cheers.